Hi, everyone. My name is Guy Hirsch. I'm the US Managing Director for eToro. Uh, eToro is a global investment platform. Our vision is opening the global markets to, uh, for everyone to trade and invest in a simple and transparent way. Today, eToro is live in 140 countries. We have more than 11 million users. We have more than 700 employees in offices worldwide. And the company has raised $162 million to date. We're profitable, and we're growing fast. eToro US started uh, or announced uh, its launch publicly on March of this year. Our US headquarters uh, is based out of uh, Hoboken, New Jersey. And we are growing both in terms of team members, customers, and product offering. And so we started this March with the opportunity for you to open an account, deposit funds, and then on your own, buy and sell crypto assets on our platform. As you do that, your trades, your track record, your portfolio, by default, is shared with the rest of the community. So people can see how well you're doing with your own real money. And then this, this month, we were happy to announce two additional product offerings that allow you to invest in somewhat of a different way. So one of them is copy portfolio. These are our own thematic investment strategies or a strategy of a partner that we call partner copy portfolio. And we've announced this, uh, this month uh, about a partnership with a company called The Thai. They have developed a really interesting investment strategy in crypto based on sentiment analysis from Twitter. And if you had invested in that as of October 2017 all the way to June 2019, your portfolio would have returned 281% versus the 53% of an equal allocation of the 13 coins in the strategy, and also against uh, Bitcoin itself, which produced around 150% during that time. So it's a really interesting uh, investment strategy available for our users. And this week, we have announced Copy Trader. Copy Trader allows you to invest in other people on the platform that are proven to be capable of investing in the crypto asset class in a way that's uh, uh, outperforming. And so the launch was accompanied by a massive ad campaign featuring Alec Baldwin. We're very excited about that. I encourage all of you to go online on YouTube or Twitter and see the ads. Um, and if you go to the product, you will be able to see a curated list of top US investors in the crypto asset class and see what they're doing. You can dive deeper into the stats of each and every one of them and see charts, statistics, and their actual portfolio and trades and really understand if this person is the right person for you to copy. And what will happen if you decide to copy that person is that all their portfolio holdings will be open in yours on a proportional basis, and then every time they trade, you will trade at the same time and at the same price. You can also get into our social feed and see what they say about their investment strategies, or more to say why they're doing the things that they're doing. And you can learn from that. You can comment, like, share, do all the things that you would expect from a social feed. And it's a really collaborative investing experience like no other. And it gives you also the confidence to understand that this person is not just lucky, but there's, there's a thought and strategy behind it. Copy trader adoption to date outside of the US saw tremendous success. We've had more than 80,000 users being copied. We've seen more than uh, or close to 400 million trades being copied. And more, more than 600,000 of our users decided to copy another person. And we are hoping to bring the success of copy trader to the US as of this week. So go to eToro.com, download, download the app, and start copying. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. So fantastic. My name is Crypto Man Run. I'm the host of uh, CNBC Africa's Crypto Trader. Uh, it's the world's first, and I think today is still the only televised crypto show in the world. And uh, ironically, it's actually been sponsored by eToro yes. um, right, right from the start. Um, on Twitter, my handle is CryptoManRun. I have a lot of questions about what I saw here now. And if you guys have any questions, I urge you to just ping me on Twitter now, and we can always pose the questions uh, to Guy. Um, Guy, first of all, those numbers are huge. 11 million users, and uh, you know, the, those numbers are gigantic. 
eToro started off very much as an equity trading platform, but it seems to me certainly that you guys are spending much more of your time, resource, effort on crypto. Is that just because I'm living in crypto land, or is that a company strategy where you're saying we want to spend X percent of our resources on crypto, and how much of your time is and resources are crypto? So I think that we were involved in crypto very, very early on. So Yoni, our founder and CEO, uh, when he read the white paper, um, was immediately hooked and saw, saw the light and convinced our board to start investing in Bitcoin out of our own uh, balance sheet, as well as develop capabilities to bring about the world of crypto into the masses. And crypto or Bitcoin was available for trading on the platform as early as 2014. Uh, so we were really early in that sense. Um, uh, we were involved in crypto. Uh, Vitalik worked at eToro uh, just before he left to start the... And he worked on, on color coins there. Or... Correct. Uh, so eToro has been in the space for years and years now. And we were at the right place at the right time when uh, the craziness happened towards the end of 2017. We were, we, we, were, we were able to capitalize on all the interest in this asset class. And we definitely see the future of the financial services industry running on a blockchain. And so what is happening, I would say, is a dual or a, a, a kind of a sort of a parallel track. First, we want to transform our own business. So we have invested in tokenizing assets. We bought a company out of Denmark that developed a protocol to tokenize financial assets. That's Fermo, yeah? Fermo, uh, currently Toro Lab. So that is, that is the team that is tokenizing assets. And we've tokenized um, and launched stable coins pegged to currencies. We've tokenized and launched stable coins pegged to um, commodities. And we expect to do that across all the financial assets that we have on the platform, including equities. And that will allow us, in, in, a, in a certain time frame, to really offer all the trading that we have available on the platform to basically be conducted on top of a blockchain as opposed to traditional channels. Do you segment your client base today into crypto and non-crypto? I mean, is there you know, someone that looks at it and said, you know, this is the non-crypto money, the non-crypto universe? and this is the crypto universe, or is it just one part of money and the idea is trade anything you want? So we see a lot of our users invest in at least two asset classes. And most of them, I don't have the exact number out of my uh, top of my head, but most of them are in crypto to some degree. And uh, this is an interesting asset class for the millennials. And millennials are eToro customers. This is m most of our users are, uh, or the average, age of the eToro users about 34 year old male that's you know basically the profile of our customer and so they're interested in crypto so they will be exposed to crypto some of them a lot some of them a little but they're buying crypto but maybe investing in equities maybe investing in commodities but in crypto too 2017 the the big bull run of 2017 which I, i'm sure all of us wish came would come back um what did that do for your numbers as an eToro business in terms of users? Was that something that added 10% to your user base? Was that something that doubled your user base? No, it blew off the roof. So it's, it was, we grew exponentially. And those customers that got in and you know, got shaken out or lost all their money, are they still eToro customers? Yes. Are they trading crypto or are they trading equities? Both. So. What was good about our platform and the reason that we didn't experience the massive bleeding of uh, a lot of other uh, companies in the space after the crash is that they stayed for the other asset classes. So they bought some stocks, they bought some, you know, maybe an ETF, they bought, uh, uh, they were exposed to other asset classes, so they stayed. They stayed thanks to the experience, they invested in other uh, asset classes maybe lost a little bit of money on crypto, but then came back to crypto as crypto winter was over and the interest in crypto started to kind of reemerge. Now, being in the position that you are, I think that what you want is you want more traders trading on your platform to make more money because the more traders that, that there are, the more they make money. What steps do you take internally or what systems have you created or what... Um, uh, tools have you created to make sure that people make better trades? 
So it's, it's all very well that you're allowing me to copy someone, but with respect, if that person that I'm copying has had a good month and I start copying him, what, what steps do you take to try and make sure that your user base as a user base make more money? So we are very careful about that. It starts from the fact that if your trading strategy is very volatile, um, and so we have an internal risk scoring mechanism between 0 to 10, you cannot be copied. So if your risk profile based on that algorithm goes beyond a certain threshold, people cannot copy you because we, we deem you too risky. So that's first thing. Then there are automatic stop losses um, mechanisms built into your trading. So we make sure that you cannot lose more than you, what, what you put into, the, uh, you know, into your uh, portfolio. So no leverage, there's no... There is leverage, but the, the, if, you're, if you're trading crypto, at least in the US, there's no leverage, because leverage return transactions here in the US are uh, regulated by the CFTC. So here in the US, there's no leverage. Outside of the US, if you want to get into leverage, we're doing some additional checks and balances and making sure, again, that you're not, you know, that you're not uh, uh, out of pocket at the end of the day. But we do have stop losses, automatic stop losses baked into the strategy. We do have uh, the risk scoring mechanism. We have a lot of disclaimers, a lot of disclosures, a lot of education being put in front of you to make sure that you understand the risk. Plus, what we did, for example, here with the tie two weeks ago, is we're looking for strategies that are not fluke, that are back tested, that the, there's, a, there's, a, there's a science behind them in, term, in terms of how to trade this new asset class. And so it won't be just random success, but there's a, a lot behind it. And then you can possibly feel more confident getting into this asset class knowing that there's, there's real science behind it. Do you rank your traders, your, copy, your people being copied, do you rank them in terms of a risk reward ratio? In other words, this guy is a, I mean, to the outside eye, I could come in and say, hey, this guy's got an 80% return. What I'm not seeing is that he took a whole lot of crazy risks. For a, for a mom and pop or you know, someone who's not a, a user, is there some kind of, of risk adjusted return or something that you can look at? So first, this, this asset class still is uh, being looked at in terms of risk adjusted returns and things of that nature. It's not, I, I think we're still trying to understand how this asset is behaving. Mm -hmm. And then based on that, offer the right tools to look at, at this asset class. Second, as I just showed, you have a lot of statistics around each and every person that is uh, available for being copied. You can see all of their trades. You can see exactly how they did their money. You can see their track record, how long has it been on eToro. You, there are just multiple ways to look at this person uh, in a complete and transparent way and then decide if that person is for you. So we go even you know, a step further. E everything's basically on the table other than the exact dollar that they have in their portfolio, we just give you a range if it's more than 50,000, more than 100,000, so on and so forth. Other than that, everything is transparent. You can actually see what led to the success. Okay, now, let's say that there are a whole lot of traders, and I'm assuming that the best traders have the most people following them, right? The ones that make the most money or the most successful over time should have the most people following them. Let's say that I enter a trade to trade behind you, who's a very good trader, and I'm going to check that after the, the session here. But let's say that I enter that trade. Does your system have enough volatility to say, you know, if everybody's following one person and this person is, is such a good trader and this person's saying buy some asset where there is not Bitcoin style liquidity, is there enough, is there a, can there be a, a place where we don't have enough liquidity for, for all of us to buy without actually raising the price? So the answer is no. The way that we're approaching listing tokens on the platform is, first and foremost, we look at liquidity. If the market cap justifies listing that token on eToro, because we know that there's going to be a demand. So we're not listing altcoins that have very low market cap. We're not listing altcoins that we are thinking there might be a risk of, of, um, of volatility or, or, sorry, lack of liquid, uh, liquidity. We're plugged to multiple liquidity providers. And so before we even list the token on the platform, we are getting very, very comfortable that we can satisfy demand. How then, many tokens today, crypto tokens, are listed on the platform? In the US 15. In the US 15, okay. Yeah. So, um, and then once copy is 
is happening, and let's say someone is being copied by hundreds or thousands of people, what is happening is because we are guaranteeing the same price and the same, at the same time for all the people who are copying that person, is that if this person is triggering a trade, we will batch all the people that are copying that person and then execute that trade as, as a block. Okay, got you. Now, let's say that I'm a champion trader and I'm not, so please don't follow me on the eToro platform because you will lose all your money. But let's say that I, I was a, a very good trader and I start building a huge following behind me. I've got hundreds of thousands of people trading behind me. What's in it for me? Money and fame. So... Well, well fame brings with it the IRS, right? Sometimes fame is not a good thing, but money and fame, that is essentially the, uh, what is being offered. So How much money do I make? Do I get a percentage of everybody else's trades? What do I make? I mean, so in is this a business model? Yes, definitely. And a lot of people on the eToro platform are happy about that, are making money thanks to this program. And this program is called the Popular Investor Program. And so if you're eligible, you are getting, at least in the US, for a, uh, um, a particular period of time, you will get $1 per copier. $1 per copier? Per copier per, per month. So if someone Per is, month. Correct. So if someone is copying you, $1 per copier per month. And later we will introduce uh, what we're doing outside of the US, which is we will um, pay you 2% of the total assets that are copying you. So effectively making you sort of a, uh, a fund manager on equal footing with a fund manager, just managing your own money, Aditoro, where we take care of the platform, the tools, the distribution, the marketing. It's really advantageous for people who want to have that you know, second source, kind of second income, or uh, really think that they can build their own practice on Aditoro. But I mean, one dollar per, per follower per month doesn't sound like a lot. I mean, how much does a big, a person that is well followed, how, how many followers do they have on eToro? So once, once it gets into the millions, you will get to 2% and then it becomes real money. So but then before, we, I mean today? Yeah, yeah. So outside of the US, we have people with, you know, tens of millions of, of assets, essentially copy under management uh, following them and they're making a very good, a very good uh, money out of that program. Why do you distinguish between the USA and you mentioned, you know, in the USA it's currently one dollar per follower per month, but in other countries it's slightly different. What's the, is it a, a legal thing? Is it just? It's because we're just starting and we want to make sure that uh, we are careful on all fronts, making sure that the program is working well, that people are happy, that in terms of compliance and regulations we're doing the right thing. Um, also, outside of the U.S., you have other asset classes, so people can, people can build portfolios with asset classes that currently in the U.S. we cannot offer. There's some difference yes. if I lost something. That sounds like a microphone. No. Yeah, I'm back. Um, there are some differences, and, and that is why we're introducing with this compensation mechanism for a limited period of time, but then we will transition into the 2%. Okay, now eToro, as you mentioned, works in 100 plus, 140 different countries. Yep. You have been the CEO or MD or the, 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 run, the person in charge of the US operation f for quite a while now. Right. How much of your job is navigating regulation and legislation versus best practice around the world? versus how much of it is actually real CEO work, which is acquiring customers, making sure you get more trades. I think what I'm trying to, to understand is there seems to be a theme that specifically when it comes to companies that are engaging in crypto, the regulators are giving companies a hard time and the CEOs are spending a lot of time um, navigating regulation instead of doing what else they should be doing. Now, you can answer this honestly because we're not going to share this with the regulators and there are no regulators in the room here. So I would say that I'm investing a disproportionate amount of time on making sure that we are compliant with all the rules and regulations in the US and that is a major uh, barrier to entry for companies who are trying to commercialize businesses uh, in crypto. However, these are the rules, these are the regula regulations and we are a regulated financial services entity and we, we are very comfortable working with regulators to make sure that we are doing things the right way. <clears throat> in the US, it is a myriad of state and federal regulators 
that, are, that have jurisdiction over our business. Um, Treasury, SEC, FINRA, uh, you know, state, uh, uh, state uh, regulators. So we have to work very hard to make sure that we are doing things the right way and that we're pushing the envelope in a responsible manner, but still pushing the envelope. It's not just eToro, it's a lot of companies in, that are here today that are trying to figure out how to bring about this innovation. And I think it's just a matter of time until this will happen and until we can all kind of get together, regulators, legislators, and industry to transform the financial services industry. It's just bound to happen. Do you feel that the regulators in the US specifically are open-minded? And do you feel that they have enough knowledge to be able to regulate this space efficiently? So my experience has been that for the most part, with some exceptions, but for the most part, they are trying. They are trying to understand, they are trying to get educated, they are trying to understand how, primarily how to protect consumers. Let me take a step back. I watched the Mark Zuckerberg uh, Congress hearings. And I can tell you that 80% of the people in the room either had no idea why they were there or figured that it was a good time to come and lobby for uh, anti-slavery, anti-abortion, and everything else that eventually led up to being Facebook's problem. What I'm trying to understand is when you're operating a financial services business in the United States that is dealing in crypto, and you're dealing with multiple regulators, I can't even name all the regulators, between FINRA, the, CF, the SEC, the CF, there's so many different regulators. The question is, are you dealing with intellectual people that have all the information that they need and genuinely have a desire to protect uh, consumers or investors? Or are you dealing with people that probably need a lot more information in order to truly protect investors? I think it's a difficult question, but at the end of the day, these are the people in power. They have the power. And so we must engage them. We must find a way to educate them and get them on our side and at the end of the day, the American spirit, spirit is to innovate. This is where you can pursue your own dreams and, and build, build stuff. And I think a lot of them are still adhere to that notion and philosophy. Some don't, but a can, lot still do. Can I take you one step back? You mentioned that this is America and this is the place to innovate. And that. What makes you say that? Hundreds of because years I, because of... I, because uh, I, know, I, know it's, I know it's a great sales pitch. Land of the free, land of innovation. But I really want to understand, you, know, you made a very strong statement, and I know you've been working and living in the United States for a long time. I haven't, so guilty as charged. But what is it that makes you say that this is the land of the free and the land of innovation? Because Americans always had a frontier. Americans always had a, something new that they wanted to explore. From the first settlers who landed on the East Coast and started to go west not knowing what's in there, and then they, when they reached California, they started looking at the moon and said, maybe we can go there and did that. Americans always had a frontier, and I think that's in the DNA of this country, in the DNA of these people. And I think um, some of us understand that blockchain or decentralization, or however you want to frame it, is a way to bring about freedom to millions and billions of people through technology in a way that hasn't been done before. And uh, I have no doubt in my mind that Americans, one way or the other, will be a significant part of this movement. So I have, we're out of time, but I do have two questions. One came off the Twitter and one just that I want, so very quick answers. This competition with China, which, well, this thing that happened with China last week, do you think that that is a significant blow and that could have woken the USA up? Yes. You, so you do think that they're now going to go, oh, we need to start winning this blockchain race? I don't I think they're freaking out, but they understand that if China is getting into the space, it will have an effect on commerce, on uh, currency manipulation, on all sorts of other things, and they are evaluating, we know for a fact, they are evaluating the consequences of uh, China's announcement. So the question that I'm here on Twitter is, apparently you guys are throwing a party tonight. We are throwing a party so tonight. Let's talk Everyone. about the party. Let's talk about the party, the more important things. Can you, let's talk about where it is, how do we get in, 
what can we expect? And we hear they're giving away free marijuana. Sorry, just... Almost. <laughs> well, we're working on that, but not, not yet guaranteed. But free drinks, free food. Uh, just Google or look at the Twitter feed of uh, SF Blockchain Week or our feed. Uh, just huddle win eToro, and you'll be able to find out all the details. It's 9 p.m. Uh, till late. Uh, so please, everyone are invited. Um, yeah. Great. Thank you so, so much. Uh, and I know I did ask you some tough questions working in the U.S., but I guess that's what it's all Thank about. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.